Uh, and I'll reintroduce uh, Mike for all of our um, friends listening to the recording. So with us today is Mike O'Neill, our LinkedIn rock star. You're listening to uh, another in our series of NISM free webinars. Uh, this is our way of reaching out to our social media community and connecting with our, uh, with our experts. So we're very much looking forward to hearing from Mike today. Uh, and with that, I'm actually going to pass that over to him. Do I have the talking stick? You have the talking stick. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, I to do a lot, a lot of webinars with a business partner, and, and we sort of have that principle of, you know, if one of us is going to hold the stick, we sometimes both hold it at the same time, you know. Uh, so anyway, hi, hi guys, I'm Mike O'Neill, and um, I have a, I have a sorted, a sorted history. I've done a, a lot of things in my time, okay. And the things that I've that I've done in my time take time to do. It takes a long time to accumulate thirty thousand connections, don't you think? How about how about uh, to do five hundred trainings to do things like, like this? So it takes a long time. But these numbers just get you into the game. They're the ante into the big league stuff. And I'm going to talk about big league stuff here today. All right. So I'm from the tech industry, so it's going to sound a little bit, you know, geeky at times. All right. And the, the NISM isn't about people who have little skills. It's about people who have skills that want to take them to further places. And, and the tech background that I have plays really well with social media. That's why I'm in the business. So there, there are essentially, we're going to just dive kind of halfway into the book. The, the easy stuff, the background stuff is not here. That's not what this is about. This is... This is about jumping in to something and using skills that you already have, not, not just re, re, restarting from scratch. So many things here will seem familiar in parts, but the wholeness is what to look at. So we're going to start to talk about two approaches to lead generation and getting business from LinkedIn. First of all is the traditional approach. Traditional. We find people. So when we search on LinkedIn, there's people everywhere. People, 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 right? Well, there's another approach, and it's a company-first approach. Let's find companies out there, and then we'll deal with the people part. Okay? So, and, and, and this is a big fundamental fork in the road here, and people tend not to do both. If you're doing companies, you're really doing both, but you know, not everyone targets companies. So, and the people-first approach really does work well for smaller businesses where there are departments everywhere. We don't have an HR department, you talk to Bob. By the way, you know, we don't have a repair department either, you talk to Bob, smaller companies, right? So in this, in this case, um, you know, this is the traditional approach. You know, we just find people and, 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 and in our searches, we find people from different companies. And, and the center of the world here is the LinkedIn profile. It works really, really good. There's just lots and lots of great filters to find people using this technique. On the flip side, right? On the flip side, the company first approach, the, the different story. Okay, it works great for big companies with divisions and stuff because you know there, there's lots of targets out there, but there aren't a lot of targets for, for in smaller companies. We're going to find the companies that need what we have. Okay, we're going to bark up the right tree, right? And then we're going to find the people there to work with. There just isn't as much to work with on a filter standpoint here with companies, right? You know, they didn't go to college. How's that for an example? So still, in the end, it isn't about the companies. It's about the people, okay? Just think about that. LinkedIn is about people. It's not about companies. So when we get into targeting, what we're talking about essentially is, is searching, is filtering, is taking a half a billion people and turning it into a thousand or less of people. In LinkedIn, you can only see a thousand search results. So anything over that is a waste. It's just gone. But you can do things like segmenting. And I'll cover segmenting here. It's kind of a high-end topic here, how to segment so we can get our targeting down under a thousand per whack, okay, per, per event. The, the things that we're going to specifically search on for people, we're using a people-first approach here. Okay? It's the most common approach and applies more often than not. So, but in this fork in the road here, you got to start you know, in this order. Let me share. 
keywords and skills are really the same thing. They go in the same spot, and I'm going to show you today. They go in the same spot. The keywords need to go in first. Did you hear that? All right. Keywords need to go in first. There's a reason they're at the top here, not just because they're in the upper left corner of the screen. That's partly why they get this, this spot here. But as soon as, at least, and this is LinkedIn.com now, okay, in this particular scenario, as soon as you add a keyword to a search you already have, it blanks everything else out. It says, oh, you must be wanting to start over again. It's a bug in LinkedIn. Maybe it'll be fixed someday. But start with keywords, okay? You can go edit them later and you won't throw anything around, all right? But as soon as you put in keywords, it blanks out all the other fields. So start there, and we're gonna go down this targeting. I'm one of the world's top experts probably in targeting on LinkedIn. And uh, I'll show you some of the little insider pieces along the way. First of all, LinkedIn.com used to have 20 filters. They're down to 11. They're down to 11. Some of the filters they used to have, you know, company size used to be a filter, gone. You know, they're now, now we've got 19, 18, 17, all the way on down, all right? Tags, oh, now we're down to 11, okay? But you can still do a lot, and I owe it to you to show you what you can do without having to get out 80 bucks a month, all right? So the first thing to, to think about, and this is a huge fundamental thing, and we'll revisit this a little bit later as well, is there's, there's a... Uh, a, a yes and a no, a litmus, is it on or off? There's a switch here. It's not like, I'm kind of connected. You know, we're a little connected. You are or you're not, okay? And this is kind of how it looks in LinkedIn speak. And I talked about keywords, and this is, this is the single field approach here that LinkedIn has, as does, what, Facebook? As does Google? How many search boxes are there where it's one box for a whole bunch of stuff, right? It's not asking you for a name. It's not asking you for an industry. It's not asking you for a company. This is saying, throw all your stuff in here. And the usual Boolean principles apply here. You see the quotes around it? That, that's important. I'm not going to cover that here with the group too much. We may, may touch on it just a little bit, but not, not much, okay? So let's start with our keywords, and then we'll add some job titles. All right, that's a, this is a good logical step, all right? Follow this sequence in doing your searches, and you will be much further down the road with less waste energy. So we start with keywords, go to titles. When you get into titles, both, search, both keywords and titles have this thing called Boolean. You know, this little ors and ands and thoughts and quotes and brackets and stuff. Amy, are you a fan of Boolean? I am. I am too. You know, my favorite part of Boolean is the not command. It's the not command. It's not how many can I find, but how many can I find and filter out the ones that I don't want. The not command, I'll show it to you in a string here. So in, in, in our work for clients, we do, we do LinkedIn work for folks where we log into their account and, and I run their campaigns. I run their LinkedIn campaigns. And you'll discover what a campaign is here in just a moment from a mechanical standpoint, but we run that. You know, it's kind of, kind of you know, hands off thing for them. And, and, and over time, it gets better and better and better. And, and the Boolean we use might have four or five times as many words as this. Okay. And, and over time, we find out that things like, you know, students or interns or retired people or former CEOs come in. So you can see where the not commands can just go, no, 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 no. Okay. Always pay attention. These are living, breathing things, these campaigns, at least for the first couple months as you hammer out the Boolean. So you're going to do that sort of stuff in Microsoft Word or a Google Doc, I like the most, and copy and paste it into here. So you can only see some of it here, and that's, that's not what you're looking for. You're not, you're not looking to, to wonder what's over there on the other side. So, so you just copy and paste in, and, and here we go. So the next level, and the, the next part of the sequencing here in, in the search is industry and industry is really important. I'm gonna take a moment here. And this is one of the one of the pivotal things that people miss. Okay. Isn't it great when you, you you go to a webinar or something and you go like, wow, that filled in something I was missing. I didn't get that. Now I do. This is an important component about LinkedIn the industry. So here's why. There's 147 options. Which one are you? Everyone take a look. Now, 
the, the new version of, of, of LinkedIn that's rolled out, Sales Navigator and all, that you can't see what industry somebody is in. So we're just talking about using this for targeting. It no longer appears on LinkedIn or on Sales Navigator on a profile. And um, I'm trying to find out from Sales Navigator if that's a mistake, if that's coming back. But it's already been gone from, from LinkedIn.com for quite a while. If you wanted to see someone's industry, you had to go over and view their profile over in Sales Navigator. Well, in, in, in LinkedIn.com, you see, wow, look on the left, there are industries. Wow, how would I know there's 147 industries? And how would I know what those are? How would I? Well, there's a link I've got for you. Okay, right there. Okay. And at the integratedalliances.com website, this is just a blog post. It takes you to the post. You might enjoy our website a lot. Give it a, give it a shot. This is one of many things we have out there that are really good. If you want to take it, you want to print it out, you want to have it as a document to look at as you plan. So, for example, maybe I'm going to, going to target the technology industry. Okay? Why would you do that? They got money, right? Um, I do. I do. That's my market. You know, technology industry folks tend to like me. I tend to like them a lot. Well, so you got computer software here. Well, there's computer hardware. There's information technology and services. You've got wireless. You've got internet. You've got telecom. They're all over the place. What are you supposed to do? Download the list here and plan. You can group your technology folks together. You can group marketing folks together. You can group technology um, uh, uh, transportation is a good one. Manufacturing is a good one. Business services, medical. All right, so use this list. This is a really big takeaway from here. Take that. That's a real jump. All right. So, so, so next, you know, some folks really do target anybody anywhere, or at least they can sell to anyone anywhere. Right. Everyone needs a few things. They need air. They need happiness. Whatever. No matter where they are, we can give money to you. So be it. But for the most part, if we confine our location to, to folks that need us the most, that we can deliver our product to the easiest, that we can, we can put into pieces and break up into parts. Locations can be broken up by zip code, by city, by state, by, by all kinds of things. I'm going to discuss that here in a moment. Locations, very important if you're in a services business where you got to touch and feel, where you got to go there. A truck roll, as we say. So. When you see just a LinkedIn logo, that should imply to you that this is only LinkedIn. And if that was a Sales Navigator logo right there, it would say Sales Navigator, right? And you would be correct. So what we can do for locations within LinkedIn.com for free is we can do countries, and we can do cities, and we can do multiple cities even. So if you're handling Colorado, for example, you might do Fort Collins, Colorado Springs, Denver. You might add Pueblo. That's another city there. You might add Grand Junction. That's another city there. And between those cities, you're pretty much going to get pretty much all of Colorado. There might be some sections that, that you just don't get. All right. So um, in Denver, it's just like what you expect. Okay. We'll come back to this here in a moment because there's big stuff with locations. So we take all this stuff together, right? And we go into our menus and we got drop down boxes on the menus and check boxes over here. And we put in keywords and drop titles in our Boolean. We got all of our stuff together, right? Looks like this, kind of like this. See our job title, see our internet of things at the top. You know, there, you might have a whole bunch of filters here, but you're not gonna have more than 11 because there's only 11 to be had. We're going to roll the ball, all right? We're going to place our bets, sort of like what we did, right? We put we put bets down in squares. Give me give me company size for that or whatever it is, you know. You don't do company size here in this one here, but uh, you get the idea. So here we are. Here's our search. Forty people in Denver. They fit all those criteria that we had before. This is a list, okay? So it's going to be a bunch of times on the webinar today. Okay, that you're going to see a list, or we'll be talking about a list. Okay, and the list might be in Sales Navigator. You see a list of people. It, it, it might be in, in LinkedIn. You see a list of people. It might be some other thing along the way. Whenever you see heads on top of each other, I'm going to call that a list. All right. Some of the tools we'll be 
talking about take these lists and do things for you like a machine and go dear tom dear tim dear anthony so you don't have to you're the smart ones you got the lawnmower that has a motor on it not the one you got to push on your own and, and 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 it's all this extra work so you can scale it up there's all kinds of reasons here but just notice that this is a list in linkedin.com We're going to move up a notch. No, we're going to move up two or three notches. Sales Navigator. I've been a user of SNAV, as we call it ourselves here, a user of SNAV for four years now. It was four years ago the company asked me, you know, Mike, we, we're going to buy this advanced version of LinkedIn. Can you help us? And I did a workshop way back then, and it didn't do squat. It LinkedIn.com did things that Sales Navigator couldn't do, and they've changed that now. It's just the other way. All the really good stuff's over in, over in Sales Navigator. I'm just going to start with searching, but there's a, just tons of reasons that Sales Navigator is worth what it is. It's 80 bucks a month, 80 bucks a month. And if you have Sales Navigator, you don't need premium on the LinkedIn side. You can dump that over there. That's 60 bucks for most folks. Pay 20 bucks more and get Sales Navigator because you get more, right? Who's seen this commercial? Raise your hand, right? How the webinar, raise your hand if you've seen this commercial. This is one of my favorites. I love Geico commercials. I even love the little gecko guy who has to walk all the way across the aircraft carrier to go meet with the guy. You know, they do really great commercials. But the idea is you get more, and you do. You get 18 more filters, not just a few more. You know, if this was 11 and 15, I'd understand a mock. I held interest in it. I'm interested in sales down here. I don't know. I only got four more filters. No, maybe, maybe not. But not in this case here. These are biggies. If you value your time, if your boss values your time, if you have a revenue number over your head, you need this here because you don't want to be chasing people that are not qualified. You don't want to be missing things that are happening because your tools let you down or they just don't support that. You got to go over there. So of all the things I to, to pull you into sales navigators, the filters are probably the most important. So I'm going to cover that. First of all, first of all, remember this? Remember, LinkedIn.com used to have this feature. It's not there anymore. So LinkedIn.com right now just has current. Okay, when they came out, when the new version of LinkedIn.com came out a year and a half ago, it was current or past. The default was different. And there were a lot of issues with that. So like if you were the president of a software company, you know, five years ago, 10, 15 years ago, and nowadays you sew for a living, you're a seamstress. Okay, you picture that, I'm a seamstress now, make ball caps, maybe, cool seamstress. Uh, LinkedIn would still say you're a CEO because current or past, you put in CEO, hey, used to be a CEO, still a CEO. They fixed it now. Thank you, LinkedIn. It's now it's current. But you can't use these filters here unless you've got Sales Navigator, and the current filter is usually most of what you're going to use anyway. Here's one that's really big and really good. So LinkedIn is a big data engine, okay? LinkedIn has knows so much about so many things, you know? You know, how long you looked at any section of any profile, every piece of data, everything you've ever done on LinkedIn is all categorized so that they can make assumptions like this. If you're an owner, you're a partner, you're a CXO. What you can't, don't see here is CEO. So if you're trying to target only the one at the top, you got to use this. You got to use Boolean. If you only want to target that person at the top, if you can take a something close, like maybe I'll take the COO instead of the CEO or the CFO, then you can use this. And you're seldom going to use them both. Title or seniority level. Take your pick. And there's some below this as well. In the search that I pulled this from, there were 18 CXOs. There were five. Da, da, da. 
people might appear in multiple categories here. So if you say, you know, I'm going to send the CXOs first and then I'm going to send the partners, you might send to somebody twice. Here's why. This is a big thing. This is a big deal. The people miss this so much on LinkedIn. Big, you draw a big, got a big Sharpie out for this one. Some people have multiple jobs and they can qualify twice or three or four times for your searches. And you can send to them once and they find them again in the next search because they qualified on another job for that. And it gets kind of ugly, don't you think, when you send more than one message to the same person? Kind of looks like you're, you're really not paying attention or you're using a tool or you didn't know this and not many people know this. So there you go. Location, remember we're talking about locations. And if you're targeting the whole world, hey, hey, LinkedIn, Sales Navigator can both do that, the whole world, that's great. You know, if you're targeting a whole country, right? Did I say countries? Hallelujah, there you go. If you're targeting a city, there you go, all right. So now we're going and then all of a sudden, we gotta get more granular. We're in San Francisco, well, you know, my God, you know. We're, we're, in, we're in Atlanta, we've got east and west, north, south. We gotta be more granular. We gotta throw a dart and draw a circle around it. Okay? Only Sales Navigator used to be part of LinkedIn.com, even free. If you'd like to target by state, and I love states, we campaign, and I'm gonna talk about campaigns here. The last half over here is gonna be about campaigns, last part. Segmenting by state, is one of the best ways to segment. Segmenting by industry and segmenting by state, and sometimes a combination of the two. What you need to do is take your 40,000 results and get it down under 1,000, get it down under 500 perhaps, so you can manage it. It doesn't fall off the table, you're not throwing away search results. States are wonderful, only part of Sales Navigator. You know, there's a, Small, medium, large principle on LinkedIn as it applies especially to companies. Some folks target really big companies. If you're Dell, you know, you target all this small, medium, large, all that. You know, you target it all, you get a different division for all of that. But most of us either target, you know, the low end of the spectrum, the middle or the top end of the spectrum. Sales Navigator has that ability, LinkedIn does not. So why waste your time? chugging through search results that have people you don't need when the software Hey guys. hey guys, oh, we just tried, yeah, we are not actually really back. We're going to, we don't know what happened, but we are going to switch things up a little bit. So let's try it one more time. Yeah, we're back, we're just, so there's the first half. All right, back from the first half of our presentation. Now you can hear me, can you not? So. Without, within the years of experience here, doing something sort of along the lines of, of what if there was a survey? Just, just picture, if you can, there being a survey. 
And what do you think of, of, of all of these here? Not, um, I'll tell you right now that more than 10 years of experience, that's, that's, where, that's where the action's at. That's where most people are. Is that 50% of the people? Is that 75 or is that 90% of the people or more? More than 10 years experience. What do you think? Is it a little, a lot, or a whole lot? All right. All right, here we go. More than 10 is 90% of the audience out there. So if you just, if, if you bet on all the horses, you'll get everyone here. But if you go with more than 10 years, you're still going to get 90% of the audience that you had before. So this can filter out some of the newest folks out there, but you don't eliminate a lot of stuff with this filter. All right. So there, there's lots more. Oh, look at I said 29, 29 folks. Lots and lots of so we're now going to get into where we roll up our sleeves and settle with those geeky. Was that geeky yet? Yeah. Was that geeky already? Yeah, that's pretty geeky. We're going to get a little more. All right. A little more. All right. So I'll be asking you questions. You will be part of part two. All right. First, we need to understand the difference between a connection and a contact. Connection, you're connected to them. You're a one. All right. And you can do all these things. The most important, which is sending messages to ones. And that's the most important. But you have all kinds of other things you can do. You can endorse a one. You can, you can recommend a one. Right? All kinds of things you can do with ones. Contacts, as we define them here, are people you're not connected to. And you know their name. It might be a business card. It might be on a list. But it's not an unknown person who you find for the first time in a search. That's someone else. These are people we can identify. There's a first name and a last name. Right? We might not know anything more than that, but we know that. We're going to invite those folks to connect. Next, a company is just what you know it is, right? A company. A company has a page. A company has a profile. It's called a LinkedIn company page, right? It's it's its website out on LinkedIn, right? And employees show up there. You know, you see what well, says, oh, I got 19 employees. You click on the button, you see 19 employees and stuff. You see that kind of stuff all around. Wonderful. Okay. But an account is something different. It only exists in Sales Navigator. An account is a special company that you saved and put on another list, okay? Connections, contacts, companies, accounts. Next, people. You're a people. We be people. You a people? Okay, we be people, all right? People have profiles. People have one profile. If you have more than one profile, you will get in trouble. I had two. And yeah, I had a training profile. So it was all dude it out, just perfect for training, right? Um, you know, he was, he was just like my client. He, he worked for Century Lake, and I got caught having a second profile. And, and, and they found it out through a bad way, you know, reverse engineered somehow, and I had to take it down. It was, it was just, just great. So, but one profile per person, you know, one company page per company. But, you know, someone might have multiple companies. It's possible, you know, as, you, as you'll see here, company-wise here, so there would be multiple company pages because there's different divisions. We start out as a person, and you can save it as a lead in Sales Navigator. Save a company as an account. Save a person as a lead. You'll be doing in these searches a lot of qualifying. You know, look at them, okay? and, and, and we'll kind of describe looking in a little, little bit more detail. But you're going you're to look at them, you know, make a decision. Are they go or no go? You know, hot or not hot, right, as, as they said in early Facebook days, right? Hot or not hot, I don't remember, something like that. But there's a decision to make on who is not going to be going forward with us and who is. And if they're connected to us, we're going to message them. And remember, not connected, we're going to invite them. So if you're you know, just not sure, like you see them on a list, you're not sure, you just look a little closer, right? This is the sales navigator profile header. By the way, I'm sorry, the sales navigator profile header. If you didn't have Sales Navigator before, this is your chance to see what a profile looks like at the top in Sales Navigator. It's not a whole lot different, quite frankly. But you don't get to see the banner image over there, that big, beautiful image of the, you know, the, the downtown Denver skyscape. You don't get to see it in Sales Navigator. But, but still, it's a great, great place to go look. And what you'll find is, in these searches, that, you know, folks you know, folks you know. This can be applied now, this A and B principle, to folks you're already connected to, 
I'm going to connect with these folks. Well, I'm going to go, I'm going to message those folks. All right, I'm going to send messages. The folks that I know well, I'm going to personalize a little bit. The folks that I don't know, pay attention. Okay. But the definition of knowing someone means you'd be able to craft a message that says something personal. I go like, maybe hey, what do you think about that photo shoot we did for NISM? I can, I can say that, right? We have, I know you know. But I, I don't know who it is in the office over here. I, I, I just don't, you know, maybe she looks familiar. But she's a V. I don't know her. I couldn't say anything personal. So, so for the A's, you know, we, if they're a one, we do this to that. You know, you buy your message, I hope we know them enough, right? We're going to add a little note, but we're going to probably take something that's already written and just add another sentence. Get it? Just add a little more. Just a little more. But this cannot be mechanized other than the, the pasting of messages. I've got a special pasting tool. Stay to the end here. You'll see the special tools, special pasting tool for you. So these, on the other hand, are right for automation. And this is where this class is an advanced class, and I prove it to you. How many classes have you been to where there's an automation tool that someone teaches you? Not how much more work can you do, but how can you put something to work for you? Every now and then, and this is one of those now and then moments. So there's some special things with sales navigator that you get as well. You remember, you can save a person as a lead. So when you're doing your campaigns and you're searching and you're, you're dicing and slicing at work out here, it saves them as a lead. It puts them in a different category. When you save someone as a lead, your homepage, this is only sales navigator now, by the way. Your, your whole page of Sales Navigator only shows stuff from your leads and your accounts. So it's not all cluttered with everyone in the world who's posting anything. It's only the people that I care the most about. And I can put them on a lead list. See? Now look real carefully on this list. Look at, at the top. There's Rich Zines, right? Gravius Financial. And then there's a little box. It says Rich, and it's got a checkbox. What do you think that checkbox is for? That's not LinkedIn, Amy. What's that checkbox for? Oh, you. You're tracking. Because I, I said he's going to get a message. And if, I, and if I didn't want Rich to get a message with this automation tool that I'm going to be showing you, I would uncheck the box. There we go. Uncheck the box. But this is how you see you see it in action here. And if, I, if Monica was really Melanie Monica, I could change it there. Over in Sales Navigator as well, we can add tags to people and get a similar function. Similar functionality in getting lists together using LinkedIn tags. So I promise campaigns. This is all backgrounds, you know, to kind of show you the pieces here. Let's get strategic. Let's break it down into campaigns. The basic components are systemization, systematic process here. You know, find our people, you know, line them up, we're going to engage them. We're going to write out, message them, do all kinds of things. we got to get ready for it first, though. And the get ready for it part is one where, you know, there's some updates to the profile, some updates to the setting, updates to this stuff here. You guys know all about that stuff here. Just take another look and realize people are going to be glancing. You're going to get a lot of glancing traffic. Take a look at it from that standpoint. So, actually, yeah. We contacted the folks that we're already connected to, and, and we, we went through our business cards, and we did that. We did all those all those little basic steps. And frankly, there's a lot to that. I could cover that for hours, but we got to keep keep moving on. We're not talking about folks that we're not connected to, and okay. new folks, all right? We're going to connect with them, and we're going to use a certain approach. To targeting with them, you know, they're rock idols, okay, we'll use that. All right, they're in a certain area, okay, we'll use that. They got certain industries, okay, we'll use that. They tend to be a certain this or that, okay. We use multiple criteria. You know, we can do it pretty quick and easy. Over on LinkedIn.com, you sure can, and get a whole bunch of stuff that maybe you don't need. But sometimes quick and easy works, and I always start with that. You know, I have a hard time telling people you got to pay 80 bucks a month to listen and make sense of the stuff I got to tell them. 
And if I told you it was going to be 80 bucks for you to make any sense of what I'm saying out here, you wouldn't pay attention at all. If I said half the material is 80 bucks and half of it's for free. Now you pay attention, right? You pay attention. I say, the qualification process is one where we let the tool do the first part of qualifying for us. Here's our search, right? Just take a look. Just take a quick look. Search sizes, search levels, buy, buy. Software, executives, a certain size. Of so we got it. Here we go. So we got our results. And once again, see the little chat boxes there? Yeah, okay. You got the chat boxes. These folks that say in by them and have that little hoop by them, that means they're paid subscribers, okay? And on the home page, you'll find that. When you get out to page 10 or more, you'll find out that the, the freebie people are out there on further pages down. But you, we start the results. Let's we'll take a look at them, right? We'll find certain people out there that we like. And we can save them as a lead. See the big save button? Okay. We can save them as a lead. And then all those sort of that is part of that filter. Okay. They don't, they don't get to know. I get asked that question. Maybe someone always asks me, why well, are they going to know I'm a lead? No, you're not a lead. So in here, over in the staff area over there, you can also add tags. Like in this case here, he's a high priority person. I can go back later and say, show me the high priority people. I only want a campaign to the high priority people. See how that goes. There's a certain order of things when we're doing our campaign. Certain order. We're dealing with folks who we're not connected to now. Okay, we're just in that bucket. We're going to send them a connection request. That's an invite to the, to the layman. We give it two words because it sounds fancier. Charge more. Connection request costs more than invite, right? Obamacare versus Affordable Care Act. One's a whole lot better than the other, right? Oh, you bet. And then afterwards, we're going to send a welcome message afterwards to kind of cement the relationships. Hey, thanks for thanks for connecting. By the way, one more. By the way, there we go. And if they don't respond to that, we're going to set a reminder a little time later. All right, let's go down this path a little bit. Certain reason we segment campaigns. Okay. We segment them so that we can get our arms around them. We can plan our business, plan our operations. Okay? And in planning our operations, that means we've got today's work and tomorrow's work and next week's work and so on. We can also see what seems to work best. I didn't always know that the best industries for me were this or the best words for me were that. You tweak as you go along, especially those not commands. Oh, no. We have to figure out what kind of a schedule we're going to do. So we might, might be doing a lot more this week. Or, uh, does this week mean today? Every day this week? Or a couple days this week? What's this week? What is it? Just like if you have a content calendar, there's a, there's a schedule here for campaign calendaring. Very much like a content calendar. You might be able to use that same tool. When we break things down into pieces, though, industry, state they're in, we talked about those in company size. Those are your best three ways. For the most part, because they tend to be mutually exclusive. You know, you're either in Minnesota or you're in Colorado or you're in some other place. You can't be in both. You can't have multiple industries. You can have company multiple company sizes if you own multiple companies. Okay, so there's a little way out on that one where you might hit somebody twice. Once again, I showed you we see a list of stuff. These folks are in four states. This is the client of mine. He's reaching out to these folks. He's a, he does EOS implementation. Entrepreneurial operating system, and these are his targets. So we're using automation tools together with with uh, with these folks here. And that first there inserts the first name right there. Inserts the first name just so you don't have to mistype it or forget it or fat finger it or whatever. And notice it. We're asking for permission to connect. Please, can we? Okay. You, know, you find somebody, you have, I get a lot of comments back. Sure, send me an invite. This is an invite. You know, no, we're already connected. Sure, no, no, I won't, I won't, you know, thank you. Don't know what we're already there. This is kind of what it looks like. I have the ability to add a custom note, and we want to when we can. Now, I, mean, I get asked all the time, well, what if I can't send a custom message? There isn't time. I'm not in the right place. You know, send it without a custom invite. Don't worry about it. Better to send it and not send it. And to think someday I'm going to go back later. But if you really are, like on your, to, get the, to get this on your phone a lot, I see this wonderful person on my phone. And picture me now, I'm holding my phone. Right? 
So this wonderful, wonderful person on your phone, and you, 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 want, to, you want to send them a message. They're a really good one. Take a screenshot on your phone. Come back later. At least you, you set a bookmark for them. But don't let, don't let the, oh, I, I got to invite, so, so I mean, I can't wait. I let it slip away and get by. A lot of folks never end up seeing that custom invite anyhow, at least not until later. You should assume that about 20% of the folks are going to say yes. What out of five. Depends a lot on you know what category you're in with business owners and stuff, or the category that I deal most with. We generally deal with about 20%. And the 20% that, that we that, that do accept, those are the folks we're gonna spend manual labor evaluating as to whether we want to go forward with the next step, like maybe meet for a cup of coffee or have a phone call. But we don't do this hard level stuff with the big list. Okay. We use technology for the big list of who we invite, who we message afterwards. That's where we spend the time to evaluate. And the messaging looks kind of similar. And we're trying to get a meeting or a call or something. You might have multiple welcome messages afterwards. One for my, my best folks. I want to meet them. That it just, it just says, let's meet. But there might be another one that says, let's have a, let's have a chat on the phone. Or it might be one that, that, that deals with, you know, in-house, like in Minnesota versus out of Minnesota. You can have multiple messages, and I'll show you a tool to make that work for you. Okay? If, they don't, if they don't respond, we're going to send a reminder, maybe a month later or so. If they still don't respond, we can take it off a notch. Why are you not? There you go. Okay. So the sending is going to be done by somebody. Okay, maybe there's an assistant. Maybe that's a virtual assistant. That could be you, someone on the call here. Could, could very well be. Okay. Maybe it's someone else. You got a relative or someone you can hire and train up. Um, well, we do this work. We're a vendor. Okay, so people can log into people's accounts and do this sort of stuff for them. Okay. Or maybe, you know, maybe you're a do it yourself or a lot of folks on this call probably are. You know, that's why you come to NISM. You learn how to be a do it yourself or. Well, you've got to systemize to do this by yourself. You have to. It's just more effective. A screwdriver versus a drill press. You get the idea. Okay. Do you want to go faster? Well, this is a gas pedal for you. Crank it up. Slow it down. Going on vacation? Well, let's just stop sending for a while. So one of the things that helps this happen is this auto, auto text expander tool that lets you paste messages in. Here it is. This is one of my favorite tools for my best tools. Everyone should get this. It's free. Chrome browser plugin. Okay, auto text expander.com. Let's you paste messages in like this. There's the trigger. Bracket bracket X puts that in. Bracket bracket T puts that one in. Especially good for messages afterwards. When I'm looking at folks that connected, do I want to send them welcome message? Oh, how about mess welcome message number two or three? All right, see how it looks. Just it's pasted in a couple characters. Okay, Chrome extension. Next are some LinkedIn automation tools. This is a big, this is one of the best things of the whole time. All right. So I told you about all this work you could be doing. Here's a tool that can help you do that. Linmailpro. Linmailpro.com, by the way. Linmailpro.com. It does automated sending for you. You have to apply. It's like a club. Got a product you buy. You know, they got to screen you. You get qualified to buy the product. All right. 21 bucks a month. This is what it looks like, sending invitations, sending messages, just visiting profiles. Chrome extension, once again, 21 bucks a month. Duck Soup is another, does similar stuff. It's like 15 bucks a month. Chrome extension, ux-soup.com. Okay, so I know some folks say that's a lot, you know? Um, you know we're all sometimes chasing the same audience. People need our help. But we're, we're not experts at this. You know, we can help people with profiles. Talk about your zone. Okay. I don't do that. Someone on my team does. In fact, she's an NISM certified person. Yay. Laura Brandt does <laughs> profiles for us. And I do coaching, one on one stuff. So I handle this one on one with y'all. I train your sales team. And this put yourself sort of campaign stuff that we taught here is great coaching. And then it's something where you need someone to fall back on. This is complex stuff. You, Run with it, and all of a sudden you find out that something complex happens. You need someone to talk to. Some folks might say, you know, I don't want to do any of that. 
Can you do it for me? Of course we can. So here's how to reach me. There's my contact information. You can schedule a free call with me. I do 30 minutes with just about anyone who knows Blink. I always have a great time. And we might screen share during that 30 minute call or so, but um, I'm ready to you know answer any questions or you know, we had a little break point in the middle. That was the potty time in the middle there, wasn't it? So, so, so the folks could, 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 could you know, re refresh their Mountain Dew, as we say. question that comes in absolutely um pretty good at being a uh, repeater root because okay so it looks like our uh audio is so good to go so my question uh in the very beginning of the webinar you were talking about modifying surveys so using keywords and titles and uh, it sounds like it could get kind of overwhelming making these modifications and, and testing out different things. Do you have any advice on how to keep track of those changes as you go? Do you do something like that manually? Or? What a great question. <laughs> Who is that? She deserves a Starbucks card. <laughs> I lost my system, so I can't go back to my notes. <laughs> All right. So as you put as you put a fancy search together and get a bunch of things together, all of those criteria in that search are in embedded in the URL. So, so when you're looking at your search results, you grab that URL at the top and paste it into a Word doc, or I like a Google doc, Google Sheets for some stuff, Google Docs for others. And you can look and you'll actually look and you'll, you'll see the zip code in there. If you put a zip code, you'll say, oh, you go right in the, in the URL. You'll see the word president and founder and stuff buried and surrounded by percent 20 signs and stuff. But that's the way to keep track of stuff. And you don't even need to be logged into LinkedIn to go use it. You just go grab that URL and just paste it into a search bar and launch it. It'll go into LinkedIn. It'll find your account. It'll run the search. It'll do all that stuff in like two or three seconds. Just bang like that. So that's how to keep track of it. And you might keep might keep you know dozens and dozens of searches sort of sort of handy in a Google Doc or a, or a, or a Word file and just run them like that. Um, don't store them in clickable link form. Don't store them whether blue and underlined. Okay? Take the link away so you got raw text because you're going to be editing these. Let me share, let me share this quick story that happened. I edited, I edited a zip code that was blue. Okay, so, so I got my Google Doc, it's blue, and I edited the zip code to another zip code. We went and ran it, and I sent 900 LinkedIn invitations out to someone in the wrong zip code. You know why? Because I changed the label on the link. I didn't change the link itself. The link behind it, it was blue and underlined. So I can do whatever I want with those words. It doesn't change where it goes behind it. So don't use clickable links when you're editing this stuff. And you want to change the word founders or whatever. You want to change the zip code. Looking at that big URL. Just don't do it when it's blue. Okay, next question. All right. So we heard from you that um, there is an addition of um, access to information and tools when you go from premium to sales navigator. So one of the people listening was wondering if when you make that transition from premium to sales navigator, if you lose anything. So is there anything you can do in premium? Yeah, the, one, the one thing you lose is the ability to do emails over at LinkedIn.com. That's it. That's it. Well, that's an easy answer. Your in-mail happen over in Sales Navigator instead. That's it. Okay, perfect. Um, we're curious about your personal opinion on connecting to people that you don't know. So I know lots of LinkedIn users have thoughts on this. So just as a, 
um, such a strong user, we're curious, how do you how do you feel about connecting with people you have no direct connection to? Well, I was so I connected to a few people that I don't know. And part of it is who's inviting who? Are you inviting people you don't know? Or are people inviting you that, 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 that don't know you? Let's talk about you inviting other people that you don't know out there. Let's go that way first, okay? It's a choice, choice race. Uh, if you're targeting the right kind of people who really care about you, and if you're in the right con with the right stuff, you should be just fine. Use nice, tight language and be kind. Don't try to sell to people too fast, those sorts of things. But on the outbound side, just, I wouldn't be, get a lot of good progress inviting kindergarten teachers. They have no reason to talk to me. I'm parking, I'm, I'm fishing with, with the wrong bait in the wrong lake. Okay? So be fine connecting to people you don't know. This is a business platform for that. Facebook's another story. Okay? You're sharing your lives over there, sharing your business over here. Okay. And I think our last question is um, when you personally get messages asking people to connect, what is it that gets you to respond, to have coffee, to, uh, to, to um, kind of respond in the affirmative? The most important thing to me is their picture. How's that? The most important thing to me is their picture. How's that? Like any, anything else is, is sub subset from that. You're in or out 90% of the time based on me looking at your picture saying, is that you the kind of person that I would, that I would associate with? Okay. Um, and the second part is their headline, which shows up on a list, those two things. I seldom go to a profile to look much beyond that. I, I decide from there. And, and I usually say no, because I got to delete someone to add somebody. So it takes me 40 seconds to find someone else to say no to, to say yes to this person. So there's a penalty for me. I do a lot of my accepting on the iPhone, by the way. Do a lot of accepting there. Okay. Um. All right. So, so I do have I do have a little a little trick for us. Okay. And can we, can we end with a really cool trick? Go for it. Okay. Um. And and many of the cool, really really cool tricks that I, that I learned I learned from somebody else. So Petra Fisher, this is your daddy. I learned this from you. Okay. She's one of my favorites. She's in she's in the in in Denmark Netherlands area out there. She came to a workshop in Denver once. Like a pepper, oh my god, it was awesome to have her fly 12,000 miles away. <laughs> so here we go. If you only add 120 characters to your to your headline using the keyboard, 120 characters. It's two lines of stuff. But you can append, okay, append, add extra text using your phone. You gotta go in and edit your profile on your phone. And I suggest a Google Doc. I just have Google Docs on my phone. I just copy and paste the text I'm going to put in for my Google Doc on my phone and paste it in, save it there. You can go to 210, 90 more characters. It's another whole line of text. People look at my profile and they see, oh my God, you got all this stuff out there. Well, guess what? I, I, I have the, you know, within two, two characters of the max, but my max is 210 and other people's max is 120 characters. And uh, thank you, Laura Branch, for that. I think she, uh, I think she's the one, one of the few people I know in the world who knows that. That's right, and she's been very near and dear to me all along. Well, fantastic. We had our last question. I think that is the last one on our side. And giving the thumbs up, we don't have anything else in the chat. So once again, a big thank you to Mike O'Neill, our LinkedIn rock star, for spending uh, the last hour with us today. Just a reminder, anybody can follow the link on the screen, uh, schedulewithmike.com, uh, and set up a free 30-minute call uh, with him and get your um, uh, one a fantastic offer. I encourage everybody to uh to take him up on. So thanks again to Mike, and we will see everybody uh, on our next webinar. Thanks so much for joining us today.